So one of the things people are always worried about, you know, is they say, oh my God, my cancer's gonna come back. And they always go, it's gonna come back in my breast. Mm -hmm. You know, and what we try to tell people, at least I try to do this, I'm sure you kind of reinforce it, is that there are two things we worry about. It coming back in your breast and coming back elsewhere in your body. And we treat them totally differently. Well, kind of the same in a way. But what keeps it coming back in your breast is surgery and or radiation, mm -hmm. to a lesser extent, the chemo and or hormonal therapy. But what keeps it coming back elsewhere in your body is the chemo. And the, the, the analogy I always use is like a dandelion. You know, you're blowing a dandelion. The weed is still there. You pull it out. Mm -hmm. But then the dandelion little things have all gone through your body. And so chemo, in a way, is like weed killer to prevent that distant recurrence. You know, you've probably heard my weed killer analogy. Yeah. Actually, I hadn't heard that before, but that's a good way of saying yeah, it. Yeah, someone stole it from me, by the way. It was my analogy. They have what's called the dandelion group, you know. <laughs> I came up with that, you know. I, you know but anyway, Actually, ahead. I mean, I've had patients who um, have expressed concern because they're like, why am I getting chemotherapy? Because my cancer's gone. Right, exactly. And I've heard that, too. And it's it, it, just trying to explain that we are preventing, um, doing our best to prevent a reoccurrence. Right, and we have a lot of tests right now that we didn't have before, a lot of these molecular tests like, you know, uh, Oncotype and Mammaprint and now ProSigma and EndoPredict. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all of these things now that we can actually look at the cancer itself, determine someone's rate of recurrence, and then from that data decide whether they should get chemo or not. And I think that's been a no big major change in the last probably 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 12 years. You know, where women actually come in now and they go, look, you know, we're going to do a mammoprint on you, and if it's low risk, great, you don't need chemo. You know, or, you know, we do an endopredict on you, it's low risk, you don't need chemo, whatever, oncotype. You know, I think that's a real change because I think that it, the way it used to be, you know, before all these tests really came around is that, you know, we'd have to kind of guess. Mm -hmm. You know, all right, you got a, a one centimeter, one and a half centimeter ER positive, no negative breast cancer. You know, you're 45 years old, mm -hmm. mm, you probably need chemo. But now what we do is we do, say, one of these tests, and if they're low risk, they don't need chemo. And I think it's cool. Do you think people understand those tests? Do they ever talk to you about them at all? Because uh, you're the one always having to talk to them on the phone. You know, the data will come back to me, and I'll be like, doing stuff, and I'll go, Lynn, can you call them up and tell them what the result was? They you know? are overjoyed when <laughs> you tell them that the results um, indicate that there's a very low chance of reoccurrence. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think that you do a good job of preparing them ahead of time, that it can go you know, either way, but for the many times you'll say, I believe this is going to come back. I do, you try to take a guess. And, um, and then again, it's, it's, <coughs> I, the tests are, I think are amazing. That's since not have, having been in the, the field as long as you have, I think that is all, that's just amazing that, that there's tests developed that can with that about that half of the people don't yeah. need that don't, don't yeah. use a chemo don't need it anymore mm -hmm. so it's really good well, most people with HER2 positive uh, early stage breast cancer will survive and do really well and it's really cool it's really neat to be I've been involved this longer than you have it's been really cool to be part of that I mean literally we did some of the first uh, uh, clinical trials with TCH in Pittsburgh in the clinic that two of us are actually in it's really cool to kind of see this now you know 15 years later to actually be the standard of care and to do so well. And so the issue though is some people will relapse despite that. And there are a lot of new drugs now that we're trying to do to prevent relapse. And you know, one of them is a drug called Neratinib. Um, the trade name is now Neurlynx. Uh, I don't know where they came up with that name, but uh, nonetheless. And so Neratinib is a pill that you take a certain amount of pills a day. Uh, and basically what it means is that you'll get the standard therapy. So you'll get the, you know, TCHP, and then maybe you'll get uh, Herceptin for a year. And then if you have a high enough risk of recurrence, and in my case it's someone who has a lot of disease left over, or has a lot of lymph nodes when it started, or a big tumor when we started, you know, and really hasn't all gone away, especially if it's ER positive, you know, what we'll tend to do is we'll think about putting them on this extended adjuvant therapy. And we take this drug, neratinib, for a year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a new thing. Uh, it's something that's just come to play. I think that, you know, the trials went on for a long time. The drug was owned by several companies. Uh, finally, uh, Puma Pharmaceuticals uh, bought it uh, and actually finished the development of it. And so, you know, and the trial literally was finished about a, a half a year ago, uh, and it was approved by the FDA over this past summer. My experience with neratinib has been through the research. Right, all the clinical yeah. trials, because we do a lot of clinical trials in metastatic breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer. Yes, yes. And so you have had a lot of experience, I know, because I have a lot of patients in our mm -hmm. clinic um, with neratinib. And so that's kind of how we have started to use it. But Right now, the way people are going to be using it, at least for the time being, uh, is by the labeled use, which is going to be for a year mm -hmm. after Herceptin. And in fact, we're just starting to put some patients on it. We've had one patient finally actually come in to request it mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. 
and her insurance is giving her a hard time, so she keeps requesting it. You know who I'm talking about. I actually, um, I've begun to see it uh, advertised, right, you know, on, TV, on the market, right. yes. Right, mm -hmm. but, I, but again, because it's not quite, the insurers are a little bit behind, it has been somewhat tough, at least for now, but I think in the future, it shouldn't be that bad to get it approved. I mean, clearly, if you have a high enough risk of recurrence, I think it's a reasonable drug to consider. As the nurse, um, side effects, I, I, I'm aware that diarrhea is, is right. almost I, a given. I, I agree diarrhea is almost a given. Mm -hmm. One issue, though, that's important that I think I'd love to hear your opinion on. You know, you're done with your breast cancer journey, right? You know, you, you had your neoadjuvant therapy. Mm -hmm. You had a great response, maybe. Or you have, still have some disease left. You had a year of Herceptin, and you're done. You know, do you really want to do another year? What do you think patients will think? And that's the thing. You see them. I see them, too, but you see them all the time. You know, is a patient really going to go, oh, man, do I have to do this another year? You think they'd want to do that? I have to be honest. Probably what I see most is that people <coughs> feel more comfortable on something yeah, I kind of agree than with off something. Mm -hmm. um, being, uh, when we've had this many times, we, we, patients don't want to break up with us. They so don't. they, 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 you know, they want to I be know, on. <laughs> right, especially if they have high risk disease. I would agree with you. And I think that it's a real balance because part of me goes, they don't want to do the breakup mm -hmm. thing. But part of me goes, well, you know, you're kind of tired. You want to be over. You want to say, my cancer's done, and I want to get back to my life. You know, and it's always that tension. I'm really curious to hear your opinion on I, that. I think that uh, my experience, most patients feel more comfortable knowing that they're, that, again, every ache, every pain, every, it, could it be my cancer? Right. And if I'm not taking anything, then it must be. Well, you know my rule on that that I always tell people. You've probably heard it. If you want to go see a chiropractor, see me first. That's the okay. kind of pain I always, because everybody gets aches and pains, yeah. you know, especially as we get older, you know. But if it's the kind of pain where it's in your bone, it gets worse and worse and worse, it's nagging, it gets worse, especially when you lay down, mm -hmm. you know, I say, listen, you know, it's the kind of thing that you want to see a chiropractor. And I can tell you, I've picked up a number of metastatic disease that way, you know, from people who say, oh, yeah, I'm just going to the chiropractor, it didn't get better. And I say, oh, we should do a bone scan and something happens. So good, okay, but I think that it's really important though that to, to make the point here that you did that, and for people to know that, both patients and physicians and nurses and, you know, that patients don't want to break up. I think they do like that safety net. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you, especially if they're ER negative mm -hmm. and don't have like tamoxifen or Remedex or mm -hmm. something else to go on, mm -hmm. you know, for another two or three years when they're done with their Herceptin. No, it's a very good point. And um, I never thought of it. And before. I think that that's, that's my experience has been the concern is they don't want to they don't want to end, end the end. relationship. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. All right, good.